Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. I'm back from vacation and back at it. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be tackling the top 10 dream walkers within the Wheel of Time. I also want to let you know at the end of the video, I'll be announcing the winners of the sword form contest that we ran last week while I was on vacation. The two winners selected will get to compete in the next Wheel of Time Not Jeopardy, which will hopefully be filmed later this week. So make sure to stay tuned to the very end of the video to see the winners. Before getting into the video, I do want to give a big thank you to my biggest partner here on the channel, Audible.com. They have been a supporter since the very beginning, and I'm a big fan of audiobooks in general, and I love their service. If you aren't sure about audiobooks or you've never tried them, I highly recommend taking advantage of their offer to my viewers. You can get a free audiobook and support the channel at the same time with zero commitment. Did I mention it's free? All you got to do is head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus and sign up for a one month free trial. You will be able to pick out an audiobook that you can keep regardless of whether you keep their service or not, and you help the channel in the process. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red, with spoilers running all the way through the final book, A Memory of Light. If you haven't read all the way through A Memory of Light, please watch this video at your own risk. You have been warned. So in today's video, we'll be tackling the top 10 dreamwalkers within the Wheel of Time. Now this is a very subjective topic, and I'm going to do my best to explain my picks. I'm not going to be spending time explaining the world of dreams in this video, as I'm assuming you finish the series and at least have a decent idea of how the dream world works and what the rules are. I typically like to have ranked criteria in my top 10 videos, but this was a very difficult one as the power levels within the world of dreams seem very difficult to gauge in comparison to others. There are going to be a number of factors that I kind of thought through. First, there's straight up knowledge of the world of dreams, like knowledge of the rules, what can be done, and the things that you can do there. Secondly, there is an innate ability, like the ability to dream without the help of a Terangrial or traveling, or just the innate ability to control things there better than others. Third, there's force of will. Force of will tends to be a very strong factor within the world of dreams as you are basically projecting your will on your surroundings and on others. We will also factor in how the characters fared against each other when they went head to head in the novels, as well as how they compare themselves to others relative strength. What we will not be doing is rating this solely on who would win in a fight. This is about overall power as a dreamer, not just the ability to fight someone within the world of dreams and defeat them in battle. So without further ado, let's get into the list. Number 10, Amis. Amis will represent all of the wise ones on our list. She is a former maiden of the spear who laid down her spears to become a very well-respected wise one. She is rare among the wise ones in that she is also a dreamer. She can access the world of dreams without aid. She has vast knowledge of Teleron Riyadh that's been passed down over time with the Aeel. She's one of Egwene's primary teachers, and she battles with great proficiency during the battle at the White Tower in the World of Dreams. The only reason she is not higher on this list is that she doesn't appear to have certain knowledge that others on the list do that really make her more deadly in battle or give her the ability to do some things that some of maybe, for instance, the Forsaken can do. Number nine. Ravine. The Forsaken Ravine takes the number 9 spot on my list. While he is far more known for his strength in the One Power, being one of the three strongest men ever, he was no slouch in the World of Dreams. He's not a dreamer that we know of in that he could put himself in the dream without using other means, but he did make use of the World of Dreams often through traveling. And he appeared to have a very high level of strength when he entered there in the flesh via traveling. He was almost able to completely defeat Rand by turning him into a horse. He would have succeeded if not for Nynaeve intervening with Mogidian in tow while she burned Ravine with fire and distracted him so Rand could escape. While not a dreamer, he was trained during the Age of Legends and demonstrates not only great power in the world of dreams, but also a very strong force of will something necessary to controlling others and the surroundings in the world of dreams. Number eight, Masana. We have another Forsaken at number eight on the list. Masana is another of the Forsaken that was not a dreamer that we know of, but had a great amount of experience in the world of dreams and uses it freely to hide and fight the forces of light within the White Tower. While she is eventually defeated by Egwene and her mind is broken, she almost defeats Egwene, one of the more powerful dreamers we see within the novels. It's difficult to not include all of the Forsaken on the list, as they all used Telron Riyadh freely and with great skill, having been trained for hundreds of years back during the Age of Legends in the use of the World of Dreams. Masana may not be the strongest there, but she is certainly very skilled and earned the number 8 spot on the list. Number 7, 
Grendel. Grendel takes the number seven spot on my list. She mainly falls into the same categories as Masana and Ravine on my list as she has a great amount of experience with the World of Dreams due to her age and her training during the Age of Legends. The reason she gets the number seven spot over the other Forsaken on the list so far is that she demonstrates a few abilities that we don't see the others do, although they more than likely knew how to do these as well. She shows great ability in finding the dreams of the great captains during the last battle and using compulsion to affect their decision making. She also flies around in the world of dreams and demonstrates great knowledge of what can be done as she kind of outsmarts Perrin a few times during the last battle. Number six, Egwene. So Egwene takes the number six spot on my list and I'm sure many of you think that she should rank higher. It is really much less to do with her level of skill and ability and more about the great skill and ability of those higher than her on this list. Egwene is extremely skilled in the world of dreams, being an actual dreamer with the talent. She can enter the world of dreams without Terangriol and without traveling there in the flesh. She demonstrates great control of her emotions and thoughts, great ability in battle, skill in finding others' dreams, and a tremendous force of will. The only reason that she doesn't rank higher on my list is because others on the list have a little bit more skill than her, and she really only has about a year and a half worth of experience as a dreamer. There are things that she certainly does not know how to do yet that others do. She's certainly very skilled, but there are things she doesn't know. So that's why she gets the number six spot on my list. Number five. Slayer. Breaking into the top five on the list, we have the Creature of the Shadow, the combination of Isom and Luke, gifted with special abilities from the Dark One himself, Slayer. Slayer is not a dreamer per se, and he's also not a wolf brother, but he does have the ability to walk the dream. He has incredible ability to control the dream and is a very deadly assassin. He demonstrates an amazing control of his surroundings, he can teleport, the ability to step in and out of the dream in the flesh unaided while not being able to channel. He is truly incredibly dangerous. His primary uses for the world of dreams differ from many of the others on this list, as he has a very strong ability to fight there but not much else. However, his ability is so strong in that area that it makes him a very powerful dreamwalker, one of the more dangerous people within all of the novels. Number four. Perrin Ibarra. Perrin is a wolf brother and a very powerful dreamwalker. He is almost a total master of the dream at the end of the books, having defeated Slayer. He has all of the same abilities in the dream that Slayer does, but he has a stronger force of will, and his perceptions of reality and what he can do there make him incredibly powerful. For instance, during the battle in the White Tower in the World of Dreams, Perrin deflects Balefire and explains to Egwene it's just a weave. This is something that no one else in the series shows themselves capable of doing. Perrin also has the ability to communicate with the wolves that have a strong tie to the world of dreams. He learns the ability to step in and out of the dream on his own as well, again demonstrating the abilities that Slayer showed as well. Perrin ranks higher than Slayer because at the end of the novels, he defeats him, so he I guess he proves himself more powerful. He really is a master of the world of dreams at the end of the books. Number three, Mogidian. Mogidian takes the number three spot on the list, and I know this one may come as a surprise to many of you as well. Mainly, the argument against her being here on the list is that she was defeated by Nynaeve in the world of dreams. I mostly attribute this to her being unfamiliar and surprised by the Adam. Mogidian is incredibly knowledgeable and skilled with the world of dreams. She believes herself to be the most powerful of the Forsaken in the world of dreams. And although all of them tend to overrate themselves in comparisons to the others, she's typically more self-aware. She just simply knows she's better than the others including Lanfear. This belief appears to be echoed by the other Forsaken and from her history during the War of Power back at the end of the Age of Legends. She worked from the Shadows and from the World of Dreams where she was considered a master. It also seems that she was a dreamer as she did not enter the World of Dreams in the flesh like the other Forsaken did. This is in fact how she was captured by Nynaeve and Saladar as her body was asleep. She was able to access the World of Dreams without a Terangrial and without traveling making her a dreamer. She also appears to have a strong survival instincts. Now this could be looked at as a positive as she always seemed to get through troubles and survive. Or it could be looked at as a negative as it makes her very weak-minded, which wouldn't make her very good in a confrontation. This is mostly subjective, but based on her history of skill in the world of dreams, she earns the number three spot on my list. Number two, Lanfear. The daughter of the night herself takes the number two spot on my list. She believes that the world of dreams is her domain, essentially believing herself to be its master. There really isn't much that we see that dissuades us from this opinion. She has vast knowledge of the world of dreams, 
coming from her centuries of life and the fact that she seemingly specialized in this before turning to the shadow. There is good evidence that the bore itself was drilled within the world of dreams. As powerful as Perrin is at the end of A Memory of Light, she is still teaching him what is possible. This is likely a fraction of the knowledge that she possesses. She's able to break through Rand's wards on his dreams at the end of the novels and draw him into her dream shard. She displays great control and great power within the world of dreams and her reputation in history during the Age of Legends and War of Power put her at near the top of this list. Number one, Ashamael. Coming into the top spot on the list, we have Ashamael, later known as Moradin. Ashamael is a dreamer and an incredibly powerful user of the world of dreams. He makes use of it often, spending time creating dream shards, pulling people into his dreams or dream shards, and influencing events from the dream. He has vast knowledge and skill. Couple that with the fact that he literally not only had his lifetime to master it in the Age of Legends, but the times he escaped from the Dark One's prison over the centuries since the breaking, you have the most experienced dreamwalker of all time in Ishamayel. He was a philosopher and a researcher, and the fact that he was a dreamer gave him great knowledge of the dream and its theoretical possibilities. We see him making use of the dream world from the very first book, bringing the boys into dream shards as he chased them and guided their thoughts and actions. He so regularly makes use of the world of dreams that I'm fairly certain we see him more in the book while he's in the dream than we do in the waking world. So there you have it. My top 10 most powerful dreamwalkers within the Wheel of Time. What do you think of my list? I know many of you will disagree. Tell me what your list would be in the comments below and why you think your choices are the right ones. Also, please give the video a like as it really helps the channel get noticed by the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Wheel of Time content. I have tons of videos if you're new to the channel, so feel free to check them all out. Now, as to the winners of the sword form contest, to make it into the next round of Wheel of Time, not Jeopardy, to face reigning champion, Angry Trevor. I actually have three winners, but one of them isn't finished with the books yet, so he'll have to play in a later uh, Wheel of Time, not Jeopardy. So our first winner is Daniel Goldeneyes with his entry, the Wolverine chokes on the Buckeye nut. As many of you know, I am from Columbus, Ohio and a major Ohio State Buckeye fan and alum. This sword form is very dear to my heart. Now, Daniel isn't quite finished with the series yet, so he will play later in Wheel of Time, Not Jeopardy, but not this upcoming round. Our two winners who will be playing in the upcoming version are The Badger Reborn and Mahale. The Badger Reborn's entry that wins is Nablus Smacks the Badger. This one really speaks for itself to me. Mahale's entry is a very deep cut and a very subtle play on words that will take some thought, but hey, that's the kind of humor I like. His entry was The Stuck Whim Struggles. Ponder that one for a while. But hey guys, that's it for the video today. Please take a moment and check out my Patreon page if you want to support what I'm doing here. My mission is to provoke some discussion about The Wheel of Time and reignite interest in the series as the new TV show is coming out. If you can get behind that mission and you want to support what I'm doing, please consider supporting me over there on Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks everybody for watching and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?